Welcome to online worship for Broadway and Port Colden United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Catherine, and I greet you from wherever you are joining us from this day. Today, the second Sunday after Pentecost, the first Sunday of a new month, June 2nd, 2024. As we continue into the season after Pentecost, known as Ordinary Time, and we wonder together what God is doing among us and where God is calling us to. I invite you to be open to how God is moving in this place this morning. Will you join me in our call to worship? The words will be on your screen. Come, let us celebrate the ever reigning love of God. We rejoice that we are drawn together in Christ. Come, let us celebrate God's love lavished upon us forever. We rejoice at the news of forgiveness and hope. Come, let us celebrate that we are children of God. We rejoice in God's everlasting love as children of God together. Let us continue our time in song. Will you join me in a responsive Psalter lesson coming from Psalm 139? The words will again be on your screen and your responses are in bold. Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do from far away. You understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I am confessing or denying you. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep, for you knew me before I was born, and this is beyond my understanding. You created me in your image and loved me even before my mother conceived me. I praise you. What you do is so wonderful and above our human understanding. Examine me, O oh God, and change my mind. Test me and clean my thoughts. Start the revolution in my life. Create me anew and guide me in the everlasting way. Here.
Hear now our scripture from 1 Samuel chapter 3. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What does it mean to dwell in a season of pondering? Woven through last week's message was this question offered to you and to me. What do our actions and our words look like in this season of ordinariness? What practices do we adapt or do we let go of to truly begin to ponder well? This week, as I held these questions, it felt as if nothing went how I hoped or planned. There were unexpected thing after unexpected thing after unexpected thing. Friends who called with news of unexpected joys and unexpected sorrows. I felt rushed and overwhelmed and just completely out of sorts. Yet in my preparation for today, God met me where I was. Earlier this year, I invited you to join me in praying for every country in the world through the ecumenical prayer cycle that is compiled by the World Council of Churches. This is a weekly prompt of different countries for us to hold in prayer. On their resource page for each week, they don't only give prompts of what to pray for or what we give thanks for in those places, but they share a variety of resources that are written by folks from those countries of that week. This week, 
An adaptation of Psalm 139 was shared from the country of Lesotho. And as I read it, the last line, which we read in our Psalter reading just a few moments ago, struck a chord within me. It says this, start the revolution in my life, create me anew, and guide me in the everlasting way. (laughs) What a declaration. Words hold power. How we say something is sometimes more impactful than what we say. Words can build up and destroy. Words can heal and cause harm. And the older I get, the more I find myself pausing to choose my words more carefully. Throughout scripture, we encounter words of God, various interactions between God's people and God, moments when the message shared changes everything. The story of Samuel is one of those moments. The child Samuel, who is serving God with Eli, the priest, hears God's voice in the night. He mistakenly thinks it is Eli, quickly answering, here I am. But then Eli realizes it is God calling and instructs Samuel to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God then gives Samuel a message of judgment against Eli's family because of Eli's corrupt sons. In the morning, after some prodding, Samuel finally tells Eli the prophecy that was given to him. Now the context for this encounter is important for us to note and keep in mind. According to the book of Judges, this was a time where the city-states are out of control because there is no king in Israel. Religious fatigue has left the times devoid of divine animation. Or simply, visions were few, rituals were steady, but only rarely provoked a divine encounter. The scripture tells us the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. And so Samuel, who was born during these times, during this time in history, was the child his mother longed for in order to be blessed. She was a wife among wives. She was barren, and in the ancient world, a closed womb was cause for grief. And Hannah, his mother, had much sorrow. So much sorrow that when she prayed for a baby, the priest Eli thought that she was drunk. But his birth made her sing. And she sang a prophetic song echoing the same sentiment as Mary's Magnificat. And though she had desperately asked God for this child, she listened to an internal prompting that said he belonged to the nation state and to God. So after being weaned, Samuel is given into Eli's care. Eli, the high priest, is old. He can no longer see, but he is still in service to God and God's people. And while it took a few times before Eli had an aha moment of who was calling Samuel, Eli's role in Samuel's calling reminds us that we learn how to discern God's voice and call in proximity to people who have come before us. That those who surround us should help attune our ears and heart to hear from God. And again, what we know is what Samuel hears is brutal, ominous words. Eli knows it is God because Eli has heard that voice and has chosen to try not to hear it. But this moment of response, of listening, of charge, began a long career that will lead Samuel to crown the nation state Israel's first king. God continued to appear to Samuel as he grew, and Samuel grew speaking with confidence as he learned to trust the word of the Lord that came to him. And people learned to trust Samuel as a prophet. And so I ask once more, beloved, what does it mean for each of us to dwell in a season, in this season of pondering? 
what does this actually look like? Psalm 139 paints a beautiful picture of God's intimate knowledge of us. The psalmist marvels at how God has searched and known us, understanding our very thought and action. It reassures us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that God's presence surrounds us at all times. Through this psalm, we are offered courage and comfort in the truth that we are wonderfully made and internally cherished by the Creator. Our pondering causes us to ask ourselves how we live in the world holding on to that knowledge. If anything, our passages today remind us of these truths, that God calls each of us for a purpose, and that we have been created to worship and follow this same God in all that we are. This means... In our pondering, we are stirred to action and to change. This means that we cannot follow Jesus and stay silent with regard to the injustices that are held against God's people. That we cannot ignore the indignities that so many of God's beloved children endure on a daily basis. That we cannot believe that we can please God by remaining in closed communities of homogenous people. We are called to be active in challenging injustice. We are called to stand with those who are marginalized and to love them as Jesus did. We are called to seek in whatever way we can to make ways to celebrate and make visible the inherent dignity and humanity of those on the outskirts of a community. Lord, you have examined us and you know us. You know everything we do from far away. You understand all our thoughts. Examine me, O oh God. Change my mind. Test me. Clean my thoughts. Start the revolution in my life. Create me anew and guide me in the everlasting way. if nothing else. My prayer for us this day is this, that we would continue to grow and become a community that is guided by love and challenged to live into the fullness of our common God image, God beloved humanity. May God's kingdom come in spite of us. Amen.
Beloved, God has called us in this moment, in this season, to be who we were created to be now. To not aim to be something we hope for or to hold on to things that no longer serve us, but to embrace who we are in this moment and to allow God to be at work in us, through us, in spite of us in the world. Because we have been called to something greater. We have been called to help build God's kingdom here. We have been called to be bearers of love and kindness and joy to a world that needs it. We have also been called, those who are called, to sometimes tell the hard truths. So this is my prayer. May we trust in the one who sees more than we can see. May we trust in the guidance of the one who has known us since before we were formed in our mother's womb. May we trust in God's plan for all creation. And may we so boldly commit to being part of the work that God is doing here. May it be so. Amen.